What is going on my dorky and 40 fans? Chad here and yes, it has been a few months since we have communicated, spoken on the YouTube network here. So what have I been up to? Still been building the X-Wing, taking care of myself, health, got all that kind of stuff going on, lost a couple pounds, still tan, getting bolder, that kind of stuff. I haven't been flying much at all, really don't fly a lot during the summertime corns up out there so if i lose a quad it's probably not going to be found out there it's just not enjoyable with the bugs and everything like that and none of my buddies have really been wanting to get out either so i kind of went back to my roots of one of my hobbies from a long long time ago 2010 2011 and that is astronomy more specifically video astronomy now this isn't like the full-fledged astrophotography where you just point your telescope at something go to bed and wake up the next morning and hope that you have hours of data to make all these beautiful pictures. Kind of thing that like Schizo does. Video astronomy is taking a camera, hooking it up to a telescope and seeing things that you just can't see with a normal telescope. Things like color, things that are just way distant and far away that you just can't see unless you have a massive scope and you're under super dark skies. If we go back into the way, way back machine here to 2011, you can see some of the pictures that I took with what I had back then, which was called a Malin cam. Now these guys still make cameras for video astronomy and astrophotography, but these were like, this was the high end stuff back then. Like if we take a look at the cigar galaxy here, you know, we had color, but we had all kinds of bad stuff going on. We had hot pixels, amp glow, everything. But the key to this was that you could point your telescope at an object and within 15 to 20 seconds, you could see this as compared to looking through even the most expensive eyepieces that you could buy for your own personal telescopes. You would never be able to see this. And of course you would never be able to see this in color. Now fast forward to 2019 and with a modest setup, a smaller telescope than I had before camera that is a fraction of the price you can see the actual pictures that I am coming up with now. And these are 15, 20 second exposures that are just constantly looped and stacked on top of each other to create the image that you see here. Now, I wanted to get this video out and just kind of show everybody what's going on because I actually did get a better camera that showed up today. So I'm gonna be tearing down my current setup and kind of reconfiguring everything but I just wanted to show you guys what is going on out there in the heavens. So if we take a look at this 90 second exposure from 2011 of the Ring Nebula, you can see just how bad the stars look and everything like that. The image was noisy because we were taking modified security cameras and running them through like capture cards and everything like that in order to just get an image. If you compare that to the Ring Nebula that I took back a couple months ago when I first got back into video astronomy, you can see that the difference in quality is just pretty amazing. And with the camera I have now that I just got today, it will actually be taking resolutions that are over 4K. This resolution here is a little bit better than HD. There's no post-processing done. There's nothing like that done in Photoshop, even though you do have the ability through the programs that we can use to do things like that. At the Dumbbell Nebula here, we have the Bubble Nebula here. And yeah, again, like I said, they don't look super good like an astrophotography photo does. I will be able to do that kind of stuff with the camera I have now, but I'm just showing what you can get with about a thousand dollar of equipment investment if you're interested in doing this. And the great thing about this hobby is you can do this from your backyard, from your patio, whatever, because these are CMOS cameras are super duper sensitive and you can use filters on the front to combat and get rid of the light pollution so they can see through the light pollution and capture beautiful quality images. And this was done on the first setup that I had. I have upgraded my mount since then, so things actually look a little bit better. I've started guiding, which is basically pointing at a single star, so you can correct for drift and everything and get your stars like super pinpoint. 
So things are really going to be coming out here pretty soon. Got the part of the Veil Nebula. The other part of the camera that I got is that it's super wide field. So I'm going to be able to get these really large images now. It's a micro four-thirds sensor that's actually built into this camera that's coming. Everything runs off of remote control. I just have a long USB 3 active cable coming in here to Mission Control Center where I edit my videos and do everything like that for the, you know, the channel and the FPV stuff. And I can control some of the stuff with TeamViewer if I need to. I go out to the scope, set it, get everything set up, kind of point it in certain directions. You do a thing called polar alignment and then you just start firing up your software. And we use a piece of software here called SharpCap. And like I said, what SharpCap does is, this is controls all of your camera, which I don't have a camera plugged in, but what it would do is you set your gains, you set your exposures, and you activate live stacking. And every 15 or 30 seconds, it's just gonna take the same picture over and over and over, and it's gonna start averaging those out lowering the noise quality and improving the sharpness and just making the image just pop and look great. And then now with the way that these computers and everything go is that we have the ability to take that image and I can save it like it looked exactly on the screen, which is what you saw before, or I can take these files into Photoshop or something like that and turn them into a better looking picture. The mount is all ran by remote control and it's constantly talking to everything. So I can just basically use this free open source program here called Stellarium, which is just super beautiful. It's pretty much what everybody wants to use. And you can just pick an object and when you pick the object, you can just tell your telescope to go right to it. And it will usually land it right in the center of the frame as long as you do a pretty decent alignment of your telescope at the beginning of the night and then you can just start wandering around and taking a look at whatever kind of objects that you want. You can input your information of your camera size and everything like that into Stellarium so you can see that this is the actual frame of my camera and it will simulate what field of view I'll be getting when I take images from now on. So, you know, you can see that I'll be able to capture the entire cigar galaxy there and I'll be able to actually zoom in really good on that as well since I'll have such a high resolution camera and be able to capture and look at it in real time. I've seen comets with these setups before. I've seen supernova that last sometimes two to three weeks that are pretty cool because they just kind of happen randomly and the whole community just kind of goes and looks at them. Speaking of the community, people also do their broadcast live. Website nightskiesnetwork.com is where everybody is out there broadcasting what they're seeing and looking at in the night sky live. So you can learn about astronomy, you can learn about the cameras, equipment, and you can just kind of see what everybody is doing. So I might even do some uh, live streaming here on the YouTube channel sometimes. If you decide to check this out, my name on here is Chad in Ohio. You would see me pop up right here and you can just click on there and join in the conversation. So that is about it in a nutshell, guys. I know it is a lot to pack into a small little video, but I just figured I owed some of my biggest supporters and fans out there a little update about exactly what is going on with me and just to make sure that I'm doing all right. I'm doing great, having a blast, looking forward to Things just kind of settling down here with the summer. Looking forward to the nights getting a little bit longer because the bad thing about getting into astronomy in the middle of the summer is that you can't really start looking at things until about 10 o'clock at night Eastern time here. And of course, you know, you got to work the next day. And if you thought that your flying days were limited by rain and weather, boy, you don't know anything if you've never been into astronomy. So thanks guys for stopping by. We'll talk to you later.